Hello and welcome back. Uh, I've done a couple of videos that focused in on a couple of bands within the R's of my alternative indie collection. So go and have a look at those. Uh, they're Radiohead and R.E.M. And I'm now on to the S's and there are a couple of bands that I've pulled out from the S's that I'm going to look at individually. But I'm just going to get through the ones that I have in the, the actual S section. So it's sort of back to our usual programming with alphabetical from A through to Z. Do I have any in Z? I don't know if I have any Zs uh, in the alternative indie, but I certainly have S's, and I'm going to start with The Shins. And of course, this uh, is one of those albums that uh, has a really good standout track on it, and that one is Phantom Limb, I believe. That one really uh, makes me listen to the whole thing. So I'm into whole albums, but when I get to Phantom Limb, that's my favourite track on this. These are not, uh, the Shins, uh, I've got a few albums, are not actually mine, they're my wife's albums that she sort of added to the collection. So I was aware of them as having some radio play, uh, and I had heard them, but I never sort of felt compelled to buy the albums, but I really like this one. This is probably the standout for me, Wincing the Night Away. So if you haven't got any uh, of the Shins, check this one out, and then if you like it, Get some more. I think their big album uh, is Shoot Too Narrow. Is it Shoot? Shoots. Shoots Too Narrow. Now, I'm not sure if that's Shoots as in Parachutes. I always thought that, but now I'm thinking it might be Shoots as in um, sending someone down a chute in terms of these pipes here. Bit of a cartoony cover. Uh, and that's, this one, I think, was uh, touted as the, you know, their big album, um, and they're, they're, you know, they're a good solid alt indie band, upbeat, they're one of those sort of upbeat poppy indie alternative bands, so you know, uh, I think they, they really did sort of get a bit of mainstream attention, but you wouldn't call them a pop band um, per se, I don't know, that might be contentious, uh, maybe they, do, they should be in my pop rock section, uh, and then there's finally this one, O oh, Inverted World, I I think this one sort of followed on from Shoots Too Narrow. Uh, sometimes these band titles, the, the Shins is okay, that's not a bad name, you know, but uh, sometimes the titles of albums can be tricky. Shoots Too Narrow, uh, O Inverted World, so you know, just want to make sure that I articulate that, enunciate, so that you can understand that. Uh, and yeah, this one's another good album. I haven't heard it for a while. Uh, like I said, I'm always putting on this one. So, you know, I'm playing favorites on this one. But none of these I bought myself. My wife bought them ages ago. And so it's really nice to sometimes be introduced to new music through your partner or through your friends or just, you know, word of mouth. But uh, so th they're, they're added to the main collection now. And it's, ma it's mainly me who buys the new stuff. But my wife and I have shared taste. So she really enjoys the things I get except for too much jazz. She feels that I, I overdo it with jazz a little bit. Now, um, I'm going to show these in order, but I got this second, and this is Slow Dive, um, Pygmalion. And I got one that actually has two discs, so it's got, you know, it's got a few extras. It's got a second disc on it. Uh, this one is mostly instrumental, um, Slow Dive uh, from the 90s, uh, so I'm just checking the date there. Uh, 1995, I should do research before these, but I, I simply don't. I'm just trying to get through these. Um, it's an amazing album. It's shoegaze, so, and it's it's British sort of shoegaze. Uh, and I'm just trying to think in the same vein as um, My Bloody Valentine. I'm not saying that they're from the UK. I'm not sh entirely sure where they're from, but these guys are from the UK. And it's beautiful shoegaze music, uh, which is a genre that you can investigate. It's just really mellow, introspective, um, great instrumentation, really interesting. But what got me into them was this Sublime album. So this is a, a recent album that came out in the 2000s. It was like they reformed and they put out this album, self-titled, so it's just called Slow Dive. And this is uh, fantastic. And this has singing on it, female singer. I think there might be a couple of tracks on Pygmalion where there is some singing, but this has got singing throughout. Uh, but the, just the instrumentation in this is amazing. So it's still the sort of shoegaze sound, but really, you know, there's some really upbeat moments in here. 
mostly it's just ethereal and beautiful and just stunning. I, I was blown away by this and I hadn't heard of them, which is, you know, sometimes that happens. I, I didn't know of them back in the day, discovered this album and now retrospectively I'm, I'm interested in some of their other albums actually, I just haven't got them yet. Moving right along, uh, there's Smog, and I haven't put these in order, but um, this one is called Accumulation None. And Smog is uh, led by Bill Callahan. Essentially, it is Bill Callahan. So if you know Bill Callahan, it's his singing, his voice, um, great lyrics. That's what I like about Bill Callahan. I love his voice and I love his lyrics. Uh, but he was Smog for a while until he sort of now releases things under his name, Bill Callahan. And I've got uh, Dongs of Savotion. Uh, so this is uh, a fantastic album. I love all these albums. It's hard to describe them. I mean, a lot of his uh, self-titled stuff I've got under folk world country section of my collection. So it's got more of a folky vibe to it. This is more um, alt sort of rock. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot of instrumentation going on. This is Knock Knock. I think this is one of the standout albums that people would say this is the one to get a smog. So look into Knock Knock, see if you like it. Uh, this is, I don't know if that's part of his uh, recording process. Some kids may be in there. Uh, but yeah, interesting sort of uh, instrumentations. It's quite rich, it's quite dense. He's a multi-instrumentalist, so he's capable of um, not only producing amazing music through what he plays, but also bringing in sort of session musicians. So yeah, if I look at this, it's got for Bill Callahan vocals, guitar, piano, Hammond, synth washers, and then he's got a pedal steel, drums, piano, trumpet, French horn, bass, piano, Hammond, hurdy-gurdy, drums, more drums, and a robot doing some drums. So yeah, it's very dense, rich music. And this one is Red Apple Falls which is a really cool cover. I really like the cover. Um, I think this is another one that's a standout. So I'd say, you know, look into Knock Knock and Red Apple Falls. Uh, yeah, these are around the late 90s. I'm just checking the back now, just to sort of where I can see the dates. Uh, this one's a little bit more recent, and uh, it's the last I've got of Smog, um, and that A River Ain't Too Much To Love. Uh, this is an amazing album as well. So uh, as I was saying when I was going through the first slide of the alphabet, when I have three or more of somebody, although Slow Dive, I only have two, but I would recommend this. This you should add to your collection for a physical collection. I've almost lost track of what this whole thing is about, and it's recommending things for a physical collection. Now, if you were to get just one album out of Smog, I really couldn't say, other than this one, I think is very approachable. Uh, but have a listen to it, see if you like it. Uh, because his lyrics are quite unusual, and if you don't like his lyrics or you don't like his voice, because his, his voice uh, stands out too, it's a really unique voice, I love it, it's a warm, rich, deep voice, uh, but if you don't, you don't, that's, that's, um, that's fine, but if you do, uh, just pick an album that works for you, I've got a lot because I just really love Smog, I love Bill Callahan. Now moving right along, I've got just sort of a one-off here, um, Soul Savers. And there's this track, Revival, which uh, really caught me. Um, and this is, uh, now I've got to get his name right, because uh, he's a, a bit of a gun for hire in the music world. Um, and he came out with this band, Soul Savers. And is it Mark Lanigan? I believe it is. Again, this is where I'm at fault for not actually uh, just checking. Yeah, it says Mark, so it's Mark Lanigan. Uh, he's in, been in a few other bands, sort of like joined other bands, but this is his project, Soul Savers. And the revival track, it definitely has a, a biblical epic quality to it. And so perhaps as the name of the band suggests, and the album is called It's Not How Far You Fall, It's The Way You Land. So, you know, it's a bit of an affirmational album, I guess, with a title like that. It's not how far you fall, it's the way you land. I'm glad I could read it there, but I didn't want to try and read it on the cover. Um, it's an amazing album. It's worth looking into. It's not a must-have, though. I really got into it because of Revival, and that's a great uh, track and a great video. It really captures sort of um, 
evangelical um, revivalist kind of church spaces or whatever and it's just kind of yeah uh, yeah it just sort of like captures that nicely in the video but also the music it's very earnest and forthright uh, and quite anthemic so if you like that sort of thing check out soul savers finally i'm going to finish on supergrass so they're a Britpop band uh, so i've mentioned Britpop before uh, blur is the Britpop that i got into uh, pulp will be coming up um, funnily enough, they are in my pop collection as opposed to uh, being in the alternative collection. But Supergrass, I've got in the alternative collection. They were kind of poppy. These are upbeat tracks. Um, this has got a bonus disc. Sometimes you get that. This was sort of from a, a, a release uh, when they were touring. And so it's good to have sort of some live versions of tracks. In It For The Money was one of their big tracks. Uh, I'm just trying to see what the other one was because they they had a moment. They're one of those bands that I've mentioned firework bands before. They sort of ascended very quickly. Um, they were tail end of um, the Britpop era. I'm not sure how seriously they were taken, um, but I don't think they took themselves seriously because the album's called In It For The Money. So uh, they're not quite, you know, Blur or The Charlatans or Oasis even, um, and certainly not Pulp, but they're kind of in that area, that ballpark of sound. So if you like Britpop, check out Supergrass. You may have heard of them. They did have some cut through in uh, music videos and on radio. And so those are all the S's. So there, there weren't that many different bands within the S's. Again, this is just in the alternative indie. Uh, sometimes I think, well, you know, where, where's Smashing Pumpkins? I've got that in Pop Rock. Um, and then I'm thinking maybe they should have been an alternative. Uh, so yeah, I, I might be reviewing my um, my collection and how I've indexed them and where, where I've put them. But anyway, uh, it's, it's too late for that now. I'm going to go into a couple of bands in the S's that um, are really sort of special to me. So they're, uh, well, one's a musician, the other one's a band that are important to me. Um, and so I'm going to do a couple of independent videos on those and then we'll get on to the T's and we'll just get through the alternative indies before we move on to, uh, I think it was going to be blues next. So yeah, please keep coming back. Great to see you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.